Hey there everybody and welcome back to Introduction to Geometry Nodes, the only series that takes you from beginner knowing nothing about geometry nodes all the way to the very end where you are advanced and can make anything that your mind can create. So, so far, assuming you've seen the first four some parts, we've done everything in geometry nodes about explaining what it is, about how to connect nodes with some basic node groups, and at the very end we made a snowman. That was our final project. Uh, what I want to do for the next six sum tutorials is get this snowman animated, uh, which seems easy, but there's actually a bit more going on under the surface. So uh, to build up to that where we can animate our snowman, uh, what I want to do today is talk about set position node, uh, which is a very specific node, but it has a lot of features. So again, geometry nodes make it a geo nodes group, but it makes the modifier. You already know all this. Now, uh, set position node, you can literally just type this in right here set position node. It's basically a more complicated transform node that lets us basically go into edit mode of this object. So I can offset it, uh, do this translation stuff. Um, in this sense, it doesn't look that much different from a transform node, right? I can move it, do all this. Uh, the difference is this transform node moves the entire object, whereas set position, and we're going to be using this for pretty much every project in the future, uh, set position can move stuff, but only for a certain selection, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, a box like this one, and this is where we're actually going to get into the scary spreadsheet editor. Uh, I know we've been avoiding it for now. A box is made up out of vertices. We have one, two, three, four, and then four on the bottom. We have eight vertices, which you can actually see listed over here. If we go to the vertex information, you can see starting at index zero, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, up till seven vertices. Each one has a position. And of course, it's going to be either positive or negative one because this has a radius of a radius of a point of one going in each direction. Okay. Point being, uh, there's a bunch of vertices and I can say, uh, take the selection, show me the index. So now we're doing a bunch of new nodes. So I expect you to kind of be like, whoa, too much going on. You'll get used to it. So I'm saying I want to move this position uh, based on if the index is, and actually what we could do here is we could type this in automatically. We can say if the index is equal to some number. And notice that now we have green sockets. This indicates we're dealing with integers. So again, green or turquoise indicates that we're dealing with meshes. Uh, this kind of pinkish means we're dealing with booleans, either true or false. The selection is either there or it's not. And then this uh, green is dealing with integers. So either way, I'm looking at where the index is equal to zero. That's going to be this first vertex with the uh, location 1111. So I expect it to be this one right here. And we're saying for that selection, uh, move the thing. So again, notice this is different from the transform node because we're actually editing uh, one at a time, right? Or I could say, go to the second uh, index, index number one. Now we're dealing with this. Uh, if I wanted to move uh, a couple of these, I could say, look at where the index is greater than, well, greater than three, which would mean we're dealing with four, five, six, and seven. Uh, which means we're dealing with half the me half the mesh. And you can see uh, why this is so useful. It's basically a procedural way to access edit mode. But uh, it's not just about you know setting uh, offsets for certain selections. Uh, you could get much more complicated. In fact, you're going to notice that there's a position right here, and we can hard code a position. So instead of saying offsets, right now it's moving all the vertices by plus or minus something on the x-axis. Instead of offsetting them, I can hardwire what the position should be. So for example, if I wanted to turn this cube so that it's all going down a line, what I could say is take the position. We're going to use a combine XYZ. You've seen this node once before where I've kind of hinted at it. What this does is it lets us make a vector XYZ and deal with the individual components. And what I want to do is I want to take the uh, index so I'm saying, look at each vertex. And by the way, it updates right here. You can see all the vertices are at position zero because that's where I've set the position to. So we can literally edit this slide and you can see it going in the spreadsheet. I'm going to take the index and connect this to the x-axis. What this is going to do is it's going to be not very visible. You can kind of see it. You can kind of see this line. We've taken the cube and said, take each index and move it to um, 
the x position of the index, right? So index 0 is going to be mapped to x equals 0, and then y and z equals 0. Index 1 here, 2 here, etc. Um, we can actually be a bit fancy with this. So I'm going to mix. And th there's a bunch of ways to mix, it turns out, but I'm just going to mix like this. I'm going to mix two vectors. Since this is what we're dealing with, we're going to use the vector and the original position. So I know I'm throwing in a lot of nodes, but this is just conceptual stuff right now. Uh, you can see, once we connect this to the position, when this is set to our position output, so the bottom socket, it's a, a cube. So we're hardwiring the original position back into itself. And then when I move this, you can see it's forming into the line. Right. So the idea of set position is you can move each individual vertex uh, independently uh, with its own vector, with its own selection. Uh, in other words, it can turn anything into anything else. Uh, we could even get more complicated here. And I know what you're thinking, more complicated. Yes. Um, instead of uh, offsetting by like a certain vector, you know, like this, 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 we can offset by something called a field, meaning it's different everywhere. Um, one way to do that is we could actually create a field out of the index field. So we're going to say uh, take every index and I'm going to do some, uh, let's do some combine X, Y, Z. So this is kind of what we did before. I'm going to offset the index, or sorry, I'm going to offset the position uh, by the index on the X axis. So what do we expect this to do? It's probably going to shift things on the X axis. You see it's doing the uh, skew. Basically, what's happening is it's going to look at the index number, um, and it's going to say, that's how much I'm going to move it on the x-axis. Notice that this vertex right here uh, does not move, right? And that's because it's of index 0. So I'm just doing a bunch of stuff to get you familiar uh, with messing around with um, the set position node. We could even get a bit trickier, and for the offset, we could use something like a noise texture uh, that you might be familiar with in the uh, shader editor. And what a noise texture does is it's going to offset by a random value between 0 and 1 for each uh, x, y, and z component um, on this uh, cube. If I set this to a four-dimensional noise, we can wiggle this, and it's going to animate over time. In fact, uh, notice we're taking our group input and then feeding it into this. So if I add more geometry to my group input, so I'm just uh, subdividing, at least trying to subdivide, you're going to notice that we get a much more dense, uh, messy mesh because now we have more vertices. You can see there's actually way more points on the spreadsheet. We have more vertices to move around. And you can mess around with the noise settings uh, to get different kinds of results. So uh, as kind of a final project here, just to see if we understand this, uh, I'm going to remove the group input. Uh, let's try to make a capsule, which kind of looks like a sphere. It's this kind of elliptical egg-shaped thing. So let's try to make an egg is what I'm trying to say. So the traditional approach would be we start with a UV sphere. Again, we got rid of the group input. So this modifier at this point just creates a sphere. We literally made this before. The traditional way to make an egg is you do this, you transform it, and you scale it on the z-axis. But notice that... We have a bit of curvature going this way. I don't want that. I want it to literally be straight line, hemisphere, straight line, hemisphere, which means that we can't do any stretching using the transform. In other words, I want to take a sphere and kind of elongate it without turning it into this like curvy mess, okay? The way to do that is we set position. So every time we set position, we're moving individual vertices. And what I want to say is look at the top vertices, the top hemisphere and move that upwards. Well, that's two instructions. One, it's move upwards, which is offset on the Z, right? But it moves everything. So I want to say only do this for a certain selection. And how do we make that selection? Well, first, let's describe it. Uh, you could use the index, um, saying we have index 0, 1, 2, 3, but it'd kind of be hard to tell. What I actually want to do is I want to say, look at the hemisphere on the top. In other words, look at the positions of uh, each point here, of each vertex. Tell me which ones have a z value that's greater than or equal to zero. So in other words, the top half. And for that and that only, for that selection, move it up. So in other words, we're going to look at the position so that you kind of make this uh, formulation. 
and th that seems intuitive, and then you type it in with nodes. So we're looking for where the position, which components I can separate in the same way that we could combine. So I'm taking my vector and separating it into its x, y, and z components. I'm going to say where's the z greater than greater than 0. And if that's the case, make that the selection. So in other words, we have the top half selected. And one way to see that, by the way, is um, this is a bit beyond what we're doing so far. But just so you know, we could take our mesh. We could separate geometry by the selection. And this will give us the top and the bottom hemisphere. Notice, by the way, that it's not a perfect cut in half because we're seeing where it's greater than 0, which doesn't include this line. So technically, we want to say where it's greater than like negative 0.01. So now we have a top hemisphere and the rest. Um, either way, we've made our selection. And for that selection, where it's greater than negative 0.01, in other words, the top hemisphere, move it upwards. And you can see it's making a similar kind of shape. But this time, the profile, the profile is kind of straight here. So this is how you make a capsule. We could, uh, we could have also moved it to the side. Or we could have done like rotation on it, um, whatever. But we've taken a sphere, said this is our selection, and we're offsetting it like this. Now, uh, one question you might ask is why am I like doing so much about the set position node? Basically, our goal is going to be to animate a snowman, but beyond that, we're going to make a snowman out of a single cube. So remember how before when we made the snowman, we had a UV sphere and then we stacked another UV sphere? We're not going to do that anymore. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be like taking a cube. So I'm just going to do a demo. I'm going to take a cube and add more geometry to it. So it's kind of dense. And we're going to make every piece of it, the cone, the sphere, the cylinders for the hat, everything um, out of a cube. So for example, if I take a set position node, which again lets me modify the position, so for the position, I'm going to hardwire. So right now it's doing nothing. We're putting position in position. I'm going to hardwire a special position where we can take this and normalize it. We'll talk about what that means. But you can see we've now taken a cube and turned it into a sphere. Well, again, we're going to talk about why this works in the next video. Um, another thing we could have done, and this is a bit harder, is we could have turned this into a cylinder. A cylinder is basically kind of turning this into a sphere, but keeping its Z component. So I kind of want to cast it uh, to the nearest uh, thing. So what I can do is I can multiply this by 1, 1. So we're only looking at the X and Y. We take it. We normalize that. So you can see it's now projecting on a circle. And then we take, and I know we're getting a bit uh, out of the weeds here, or growing weeds. I don't know what we're doing. Either way, we take this. I'm going to take, I'm going to steal the x, y components from this and combine them with the z component from before. And you can see uh, now we have a cylinder. And uh, if I was to pinch the top, we'd have a cone, yada, yada. Point being, if I want to make a uh, snowman out of a single cube, which isn't very practical, but it is a good exercise, uh, we're going to need this at position node. And beyond that, set position is useful for so much. So. What have we learned in this tutorial? Let's take it back for a second. So in this tutorial, what we've done is I've introduced the set position node. It's basically the edit mode inside of geometry nodes instead of the object mode that is transformed. We talked about how we can use edit mode with certain selections. And we talked about what is the index of a vertex? Uh, how can I find it on the spreadsheet? Um, and we made selections based on a certain index or on a certain uh, position, like where's position greater than zero. We've also talked about the difference between offset and the hardwired position. And we did a bunch of fancy functions where we can offset by a function relative to the index and all this. We did a lot. So I would recommend rewatching this video if it got confusing. Um, the more you rewatch it, the more it will make sense. Either way, uh, in the next part, we are going to be making our primitives, our sphere, our cube, which is already made, our cone, and our cylinder. And I think that's it out of a single cube. So I will see you on the next one.